NZXT's got some updates I want to take a look. Can you feel the love? <laughs> the primary thing updated from NZXT, of course, is their CAM software. Now, when we first took a look at the Kraken uh, closed loop all-in-one coolers a while back, gosh, that was probably last year, um, I wasn't real big on the software. So they said, hey, we've got an update uh, version 3.1 on the software. I think I'm running like 3.1.2. There have been a lot of updates, and I'm actually a lot happier with the software. They've added a lot of stuff to the software. It still has a cloud login, but the cloud login stores historical data and they also pull um, game information from their cloud database or whatever so that the cam software can help optimize the machine depending on what game that you're playing or so that you can you know it's like when you're when you're playing doom you know you can set your your rgb lighting to just be all red you know demonic red is what you get i guess uh, messing around with it um, so i'm gonna click skip for now and not do the uh not do the cloud login thing and so this is the updated cam software and actually normally it would start on the dashboard this is the simple view um, on the dashboard but there is an advanced view on the dashboard there's two graph areas the graph areas are exactly the same you just pick which thing that you want to see so if you want to see cpu and gpu or you want to see gpu and motherboard or you want to see you know net and and, and ram or you want to see you know, net on the bottom and CPU on the top, it's fine. You can totally do that. You just click on it and it works and it's not really a big deal. There's also this expanded function. I've used this a few times when I've been doing benchmarking. So sometimes when benchmarking, especially if you're benchmarking something like the AMD RX 480, uh, which uses a lot of power from the motherboard, you can look for things like voltage dips. Sometimes the voltage dips are, are severe and the computer will actually turn off, but sometimes they're not really severe. And you can use this kind of an output to look for this. Now, this is not the only program that does this, but this handy table format I have used a few times since I already had CAM on this because this machine has, you know, the Kraken X41 or X61, I think X41 um, closed loop all in one cooler. This is the computer that's strapped to the back of my monitor tree. And this has been useful in running this on other machines to see what kind of a voltage dip there is. Now, if you don't have any NZXT peripherals, it doesn't really matter. You can still install the CAM software and still use it. Uh, the tuning tab will let you get at overclocking for your graphics card. Now, right now I have a 980 Ti in here, um, but, but this should support a wide range of different graphics cards. Now, me personally, I had a modified BIOS um, on my 980 Ti, which I would not recommend for the general audience. Um, and so I had a little bit of trouble with this owing to the fact that I had done terrible things to the, the graphics card BIOS, but when I flashed back to a stock BIOS, um, everything was completely fine and I was able to do all the overclocking and everything was, was basically okay. I'm curious if you guys have this and you're on Team Red, what your experiences have been. Uh, my, my experiences have been basically okay, but earlier versions of this would report the AMD CPU temperature wrong. And so I think that's been fixed, but if that's not been fixed, let me know in the comments. Let, 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 the, let everybody know in the comments because that's why the comments are there so that you guys can share your experiences. It's like, oh, I bought this and this worked great or this didn't work at all and you're, you're, you're a crazy person. Well, that's fine, whatever, I don't care. Um, I was able to fiddle with this and you know, this is 980 ties is closed loop water cooling. And um, I was able to fiddle with this and basically control the GPU overclock from here. And when starting the computer, as long as CAM starts, it will reapply the profile for this. I uh, also have some control over the uh, fan profile for the graphics card. And so this is sort of neat because CAM will sort of take over GPU fan management um, and it will let you ramp up the fan. Now, some cards from this generation like to run hot to make it quieter. I don't really like that. I would rather have a computer that sounds like a vacuum cleaner and keeps the graphics card cool than a computer that's quiet, but the GPU is just quietly sitting there at 80 degrees C. So this will let you override that. Yes, there are other ways of overriding that, but again, it's all in the CAM software. There you go. So the software does have day mode and night mode where it'll toggle between color schemes. So this is day mode. That's night mode. <laughs> day mode, protector of the night mode, defender of the, I don't know, Never mind. There's also the capability to take a screenshot of whatever that you might be looking at. So you can use it for troubleshooting or technical support. You know, you may be having a problem and you want to send a screenshot to technical support. You can just hit that and, and save it. There's also this uh, mail icon, which is uh, notifications. So if you opt to do the cloud thing and you get the mobile app, uh, there is a mobile app that goes with this that you can install on your phone or whatever. And if you do that, then notifications from the software you can get on your phone and so like if your cpu is overheating or there's something that you're doing 
you know, you're, and you're out, then you can see that on your phone. If you've only got a single display and you're, you're playing a game, um, you can keep an eye on what's going on with your system on your phone. So like right now, I've got the cam stuff moved off screen so that if I were to play a game on my main screen, I could still just glance up and see, you know, what the stats are and see what's going on with the machine and not have to alt tab out of my full screen game. Well, if you've only got one monitor, you know, you can use your phone for monitoring with, with the application. But I have not tried that because I haven't signed up for the cloud service yet. And then of course we've got our settings icon. Now one thing that's really handy under the settings icon is that you can just install the Kraken and the Hue Plus drivers from right here and you just hit install. This is what all driver installs should be right here. That is like, oh, you have this? Click, click, install, done. And I saw Windows do some things over in the background and some things happen in the background, obviously, to do with device manager. But yeah, the drivers are there now. So yeah, that is how it should be. That is how that is how driver installation should be. Like the Windows developers could take a lesson from installing those drivers because Windows driver installation is usually hell. It also has another mode called Minicam that I'll show you real quick. And so this is Minicam. So if you don't have gobs and gobs of screen real estate like I do, you can switch to Minicam and you get this sort of miniature miniature view. Now if you want to switch back and you want to do say CPU, let's do CPU and motherboard. Then you want to switch to minicam. You still got CPU, GPU, and RAM. I'm not sure if this screen is customizable, but I could not figure out a way to customize this screen from playing with it for just a few minutes. So inside of settings, you do have some options. You can manage your online account. You can manage your online account if you <laughs> if you want an accent color other than sickness green. Uh, I'm gonna go for um, I don't know Ninja Turtles green. There we go. Yeah, I think this was an old default. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, we'll we'll go for violent orange. It's cool. All right. So now I've got my violent orange color accent color and ta-da, you know, good to go, whatever. You can do an FPS overlay with the Cam Plus software as well. You can toggle different things that would be on in the overlay. And this actually I found to be really well. You know, normally I use fraps for this because old school, but this actually worked really well. Um, this was really useful in benchmarking um, some of the other applications. So I would not be surprised if you see this sometimes on some of the streams and sometimes on some of the benchmarking stuff that we do because uh, this actually was really nice. Although I wish that there was a way to record frame times with this because with fraps I can record frame times and graph it. I didn't really see a way to record frame times with this, but it is customizable and you can pick, you know, which thing that you want to see on the overlay. So I found that to be pretty handy. And so here's the notification settings. So you can pick what kind of notifications you want to receive. GPU notifications, GPU load, temperature, hard drive loads, you know, CPU temperature, CPU load, whatever kind of notification you might be looking for is available here within the settings software. Let's hook up the Hue Plus and control that and see what happens. Okay, firmware is updated. So now that the firmware is updated, we've got the Hue Plus tab on the software. And we can go configure LEDs and we can say channel one and channel two. <laughs> now one slightly weird thing in the user interface is that you have to toggle the channels on, or at least I did. And so even though it looks like everything is going to work in the user interface, no, not so. You have to click this and then turn on the channels and then go back and then you can change whatever, so save it. And then that actually makes the difference. <laughs> you can see the reflection in my glasses even, nice. So with fixed, uh, it's just a fixed profile. And you, you set a color and you're good to go. So I can set it to, you know, violent orange or puke purple or seafoam green, whatever. There's also a breathing. Breathing is sort of a visual effect on the LEDs. It's kind of like it fades in and fades out, but it follows a curve instead of just a linear fade in, fade out. And you can set the speed at which it does this through the uh, through the the, the, the dropdown. If you're looking for more of a fading kind of an effect, uh, you can actually have a couple of different color cycles. In this case, it's going to cycle through red, green, and blue. And I'm going to set it to the fastest speed just so we can demonstrate it on the video. And so here we can see that it, it's fading through the three colors that I've picked in the uh, in the UI here. Then there's also a marquee. Now this is one of the ones where individually addressable LEDs. The benefit of that becomes clear. So in this case, because each LED is individually addressable, we can do things like having one LED on at a time that's just sort of doing a chase. And if I were to say, make it red, well, I'd have to fiddle with it to get exactly the right shade of red, but I could make it like the scanner in Knight Rider. Yeah, that's really exciting. <laughs> you can also do a covering marquee where you've got kind of a different effect. It's still one LED at a time, but 
you've got sort of a, a different effect going on there. A pulse effect. You could do a spectrum wave. A little bit, a little bit rainbow for me. Uh, you can pick the direction and the interval as well. And you've got alternating colors. Let's do, uh, let's do red and green for a Christmas theme. Yeah, Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> and then candlelight. Candlelight is just sort of a, the LEDs are kind of flickering uh, sort of special effect. Now there are also smart effects you can do to where, you know, based on your CPU temperature, the color would be picked or the FPS mode, uh, you know, depending on where your, your frames per second is, you know, everything is, is blue if it's, you know, 60 FPS or greater, purple if it's 50 and 30 or 20, you know, would be red. And so this is monitoring your game using the software that we saw earlier. And if your FPS drops below 60, then you start to get a color effect inside your case. Personally, I would probably use the temperature profile ones because that seems handy. Custom, of course, um, lets you set up a custom profile. It would be nice if there was a programmatic interface for this. I'm not sure that exists, but if it does exist, let me know in the comments. And then there's also an audio. Uh, now the audio thing is beta, but it'll attempt to monitor your audio um, during a game or monitor your Windows audio. And then you can use the LEDs almost like a, like an LED spectrum so that you can control the lighting for that. Now there are a lot of people on YouTube that have built really amazing <laughs> lighting setups with these. Kyle, for example, has set up just a ridiculous uh, <laughs> machine with one of these. Uh, you know, RGB, I don't know if RGB is really my thing. I'm working on a project where I could maybe see using RGB. I don't wanna give too much away but I will need an RGB lighting controller for a project that I'm working on if it comes to fruition. It may not make it off the drawing board, but I'm hoping that it will. And if it does, I might consider using this as a lighting controller. It would be, it would, it would be almost what I need in order to be able to pull that off. But that's a story for another day. Now, one other thing I'll point out real quick is because we've been fiddling around with the software, look, we've got three new notices from the cam software where it said, hey, we've detected some stuff that has been added to your system. And it's like, yeah, I added the, the Hue Plus, it's plugged in, you know, you're gonna actually run it and do stuff with it. It's like, yeah, here you go, it's all good to go. You'll also notice that, you know, it's detected that I've plugged in the two LED strips here and here. This controller will actually drive up to four LED strips per channel. So you could buy more LED strips if four LED strips is not enough. I think you can drive up to eight with this thing. The LED strips are kind of short, you know, they're, they're this long um, and do remember that you've got to make sure that you put your end caps on your LED strips so that you don't accidentally short out something inside your case because if <laughs> if those four pins are just floating around your case and it touches the side of the case at the same time it will short out and that will be bad so I've got my LED strip hooked up and I'm ready to go that's been a quick look at the updated cam software from NZXT uh, I hope you enjoyed it whether RGB is or isn't your cup of tea, let me know in the comments. I'll be curious. I'll be curious what the audience breakdown is. It's like RGB versus no RGB versus I just don't care. And if you're one of the I just don't care people, be sure to weigh in because the no RGB people and the yes RGB people are not gonna be the least bit bashful about weighing in on their opinion either. So let me know. I'll see you in the comments. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. Bye.